Hello fleet, uh, this video is actually being made really really late, like it's like 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm making this video and I really wanted to make this video, not because this gameplay is great, I mean it kind of is, but mainly because I wanted to thank all of you for those super positive comments that you all posted to me in my most recent Monday Rules video and I just wanted to let you all know that I appreciate it a lot and it made me feel quite a bit better and so you know, really really do appreciate it. But I do also want to talk about this particular battle, and um, I want to talk about this battle not so much about how OP the Russian destroyer is, because I'm pretty sure by the time you get to the end of this, you'll realize what I'm talking about. But I want to make this video, and I kind of want to talk about the sort of theory crafting behind how to play, you know, the gun arm destroyers. And I've been doing that quite a bit. I've been sort of sitting there and trying to figure out how to play these destroyers, these gunboats to their maximum effectiveness and I realized that it's not about the damage it you know initially I was like well you know it isn't it all about the damage the max damage you do the better right but the more I play these gun destroyers and I've been playing all the tiers as well and all of the different nations as well and I'm thinking about them and I'm going no I don't think their purpose is really to do as much damage as possible now mind you this this battle here, I am going to do like a crap ton of damage and I'll show it to you at the end. But I think the role of the gun destroyers is not merely just to harass, but to actually corral people. I think the role of pretty much any of the gunboat destroyers is to get into a situation where you are in front of your fleet. You're invisifiring at the enemy ships and what you're really doing is you're preventing them from engaging your team in the best possible kind of positions. So in this particular battle, for example, the Yamato would be most advantageous sort of pointing the bow of his ship towards my fleet. And the reason why that would be most advantageous for Yamato is because he's going to be very nicely angled. So my team is not going to be able to penetrate many shots. And then on the flip side, he's going to be able to use at least 66% of his firepower against my team which would make his Yamato both extremely hard to kill and also extremely capable of doing damage. The position that I want the Yamato to be at is in somewhat of a retreat, only capable of merely using the rear gun, or just getting to a position where they're not able to engage my team with either their full firepower or they're just in a position where their armor profiling isn't that good. And you'll see that the enemy team reacts to me very, very different than how the ships on my team are playing. Take a look at my position, take a look at where my team is, which is behind me, and you'll see that my team is bow in towards the enemy team, which means they're actually trying to push. Take a look at the enemy ship's positions. They're all going bow away, so that means they're all trying to fall away and falling back. So, and, and, and this is happening because I'm just setting them on fire. Like, battleships don't like to be on fire. <laughs> Let's get that point really, really clear. Battleships hate being on fire, and if I'm like, you're on fire, you're on fire, you're on fire, the battleship's reaction is, eh, okay, let's just turn back, let's repair everything, and, you know, let's come back out after. But if they're being set on fire, they're being repaired, they're being set on fire again, battleships have a tendency to saying, okay, I don't want to be here, I'm going to fall back. And you'll see that all these battleships have the same mentality. The minute I set them on fire, they start kind of to turn away. The minute they actually are able to fix their fire and then they go on fire again, they just turn and go away. And you'll see that even though the, the majority of the enemy battleships are actually over on this particular flank, and I mean this is all their large battleships as well, the Yamatos, the Iowas, they aren't pushing. And it's mostly because I'm harassing them to death. You see that like they don't really get a chance to come out to actually engage my team because the minute they try, there you go, like that Yamato. Came out, tried, bam, on fire. And the minute you see him on fire, doesn't want to stay there again. The other battleships now, I'm like, okay, I got that one Yamato on fire, let me set all of you on fire as well. And especially with the Russian tier 10, mind you, it's like the rate of fire, the invisifiring, the speed and everything allows me to hound these battleships constantly. There is no break, no breather, nothing. They're just constantly being bombarded. It's almost like it's almost like they're being shell shocked. It's like you know fire, you know shock and all kind of thing. 
by the time that uh, a grand total of like not even eight full minutes yet elapsed in the battle, I've already managed to get my Witherer badge. That's 60,000 damage in fire. And I mean, by this time, it's not even that far in the battle. And already I've done that amount of damage with HE and guns alone. And you'll see that the Iowa has pretty much taken massive amounts of fire damage from me. Both of your models have been burned down quite a bit. There was a Turpitz I think I burned earlier, and he was already like way gone. They already took off to the other side. And that's the thing. And, and I'm thinking that this is all gun arm destroyers. It doesn't have to be the Russian tier 10. You could do this in like the gearing as well. You get into this range where you're not spotted. You fire, 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 fire. You set stuff on fire, and then you see what the reaction is. And in most cases, the battleship's reaction is to run away. With the gearing on the flip side, I can even think of another interesting situation. You corral them so they bundle up into kind of like a ball. You kind of predict where their general movement is, and then you throw torpedoes. And the gearing has longer range torpedoes than this Russian destroyer does. So if you had the gearing, that could even be a lot of fun. Just simply getting a combination of your guns corralling on one side, your torpedoes trying to cut them off on the other side, and also doing some more corralling as well because battleships will turn away and turn back into your guns. So it's a definitely it's an interesting kind of situation where like these destroyers, these, these gunboats, are great at just controlling the enemy team. They might not do as much damage as, say, maybe a Shima that, you know, with its torpedoes, a Shimakaze can do a great amount of damage. But a Shima does not have the ability to corral things very, very effectively. Sure, you, you fire off one salvo of torpedoes, and yes, you might get a couple of ships to turn away, but if the ships were able to sort of go uh, bow in to your torpedoes and they were able to slip through, they don't have to worry about your torpedoes for at least another minute and a half, which means that while the Shima is okay at denying maybe a certain area, it's not able to really control a full team. With the gunboats, on the other hand, and the ability to constantly land shells and set fires, land more shells, set more fires, you're able to corral stuff. You're able to really, really just move the team into positions that you want, away from where they want to go, away from their objectives, so you kind of have control over them. And you'll see that pretty much in this entire battle, I've been the one that's been making that sort of gameplay decision for the enemy battleships. I've been forcing them to go away and to turn to certain areas and just avoid my team overall. That is one destroyer. I mean, that is one tier 10 Russian destroyer. I mean, can you imagine if there were three? I mean, I, I played a battle where there were three of us, and just that was just mortifying for the enemy team. They just, they're being overwhelmed because not that like we did much damage, but there was just so much firepower coming out that the battleships just were, in, in a way, paralyzed. They they didn't know where to go. They didn't want to run into my battleships, but they also had to deal with a bunch of destroyers that were just, you know, <laughs> peppering them with shells, shall we say. So this is, I think, and I think this is the true power of the gunboats, and, and I think this is their, their, their real power in a battle, is that while they're not going to do maybe the most damage or whatnot, it is their ability to control the enemy team that I think grants them the greatest power of all. And it's interesting because I watch, for example, people who play their gearings, and when they play their gearings, they're still very much dependent on their torps, thinking that the stealth torping capabilities of a gearing is supposed to somehow come close to a Shimakaze. It doesn't ever come close to that level, by the way. And that's not really what the gearing is really that good for. And I think that is something that if a lot of the gearing captains can figure out, you're going to see gearings become very, very scary ships as well because their role becomes essentially like the ships, just harass, control, and eventually mess people up. Anyhow, as by this point in the time of the battle, I mean, their battleships are sort of pretty scattered. There's, you know, a, a Yamato here, an Iowa there, a bunch of Yamatos that are trying to go away. And, yeah, I'm just chasing them around the map. Now, I do make one mistake. I come out and I get spotted by something big. I get spotted by Yamato. And this is going to hurt. But, Russian Tier 10 Destroyer has 22,500 HP. And with that amount of HP and no Citadels to hit, 
Unless I get detonated, I'm not going to die to one salvo, and with the high speed that this destroyer is capable of, I can just, you know, remove myself from the situation the minute I get into trouble. And by this particular time, pop smoke, pop uh, engine boost, and I'm already perfectly safe. And it was only like, what, maybe 20 seconds that took me to get away from that Yamato? And pretty much for the rest of this battle, I'm going to stay invisible. And not only am I going to be staying invisible, I'm going to continue to harass their team. You'll notice that I still actually haven't gotten a single kill, but that is okay because the enemy team has had to abandon their initial push to Delta. I mean, I've completely prevented them from taking that cap at all, even though they had that many ships there, and that's great. But by sort of holding so many ships and also keeping them harassed and whatnot, the few ships that we had over there that were fighting the enemy team over at Alpha was able to momentarily take that third cap. Taking that third cap gave us that tiny little bit of a point advantage, and as long as we don't lose too many ships, that point advantage will hold. Yeah, so, you know, hey, I mean, I've kind of gotta tell some of you that if you're still thinking that the top tier Russian destroyers are not as strong on paper as the Shimakaze or the Gearing, you know, just watch this battle and you'll see how terrifying this one ship can be. I mean, yeah, I mean, my team is just pretty much following me up there. They're able to get a couple shots. I, I saw them get a couple shots, but I mean, I was able to, by the end of this battle, I was so far ahead of them on pretty much everything. It was ridiculous. So, by this time, uh, you know, none of their battleships really want to fight. And anything that did want to fight, I was able to continue to burn. So, there was a Tirpitz there. It actually spotted me as well, uh, because it had gotten close enough. And I was just able to light him on fire and managed to get myself a Confederate ba uh, badge as well. Which means that I took out at least 20% HP, I think, uh, across at least six different ships. So, that was nice, right? So... You know, collect, co continuously collecting damage. I mean, each salvo, if you notice, can do kind of varied amounts of damage from a couple hundred up to, I mean, I've even seen salvos for 3,000. But it's not the actual raw HE damage that's scary. It's the amount of fire damage that's terrifying. And you'll see that by the end of this battle, there's a huge chunk of my damage that came from just fires. It didn't even have to come from HE damage. I did a respectable amount of HE damage, but the amount of fire damage was terrifying. I mean, if I was in a battleship and constantly getting burned like this by a destroyer, I, I, I would lose my will to fight. I would just say, nope, I am out of here and, you know, gone. Now, some people might be looking at this battle and going, Jesus, these ships are so broken. What are you guys doing about it? Well, I mean, we are sending as much feedback as we humanly can back to Wargaming telling them, look, you guys got to do something about these ships before you release them, so they're not like this, because this is pretty damn scary. I mean, uh, in terms of damage, yeah, you know, a good Shima battle, same thing, but a, a good Shimakaze battle, yes, you'll kill a bunch of ships and stuff like that, but you will not have that overall fear factor that you will have in this ship to an enemy team. In fact, there was one battle I conducted yesterday, that was after this battle, where for the enemy team to kill me, their Taiho dedicated at planes to continuously spot me. I was hunted down by like, I think it was like four or five different ships ganging me up, and I was finally able to get killed by that amount of teamwork, which was, first of all, I mean, the teamwork was incredible to see, by the way. But anyways, um, so yeah, I mean, these battleships pretty much have abandoned this cap had they been able to stretch this battle out some more I would have gone into their C cap and I would have capped that as well and that would have guaranteed my team pretty much a win finally by killing that Iowa even managed to get myself an arsonist medal as well so figure that part out as well I mean arsonist witherer confederate badge you know by this time in the battle it had over 450 hits 25 fires and let's take a look at the stats screen and you'll see how much damage i was able to pull off in this particular battle all right so the results for the battle was uh yeah that's the damage numbers for 452 he hits didn't do that much damage only 88,142 damage but the number of fires the 25 fires did 136,747 damage. With guns alone, firing HE only, I managed uh, approximately 225,000 damage in this Russian tier 10 destroyer. 
In terms of base experience, I managed to get 2,336 base experience, which was top of the team. Anyways, folks, um, I'm just, I was just really hoping that you know, if you watch this video and you happen to be playing one of the gun destroyers, the gunboats, um, something like the gearing or whatever, this video has given you some additional ideas on how to potentially play your ship. Anyways, folks, it's getting close to 4 o'clock in the morning, so I'm going to sign off. So have a good one, and I'll see you all on the high seas.